exception to the book. We mentioned the hadith of Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, where he said that the companions used to ask the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about good, about al-khayr. قَالَ كَانَ الصَّحَابَةُ يَسْأَلُونَ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَنِ الْخَيْرِ وَكُنْتُ أَسْأَلُهُ عَنِ الشَّرِّ And I used to ask him about evil. مَخَافَةَ أَنْ يُدْرِكَنِي In fear that I, fall, that I fall into evil. And this is why we learn the nullifiers of Islam. We learn them so we can stay away from them. So we do not fall into any, into any of these nullifiers. So the Shaykh, he, he continues saying that we previously mentioned the first three of these nullifiers. The author went on to say the fourth, meaning the fourth of the nullifiers. Number four of the nullifiers that he has mentioned out of the ten. He said, he who believes that guidance other than the Prophet wasallam is more complete then his guidance, meaning more complete than the guidance of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or that the judgment of other than his is superior to his judgment, such as he who prefers the judgment of a tawaghit over his, ju- over his judgment, then that person is a disbeliever. That person has taken himself out of the fold of Islam. Before we continue, let's. Can anyone tell me the meaning of the word tawaghi? False deities. We'll mention what Shaykh uh, Ibn al Qayyim he mentions of tafsir of this word, which was which what Shaykh Abd al Razzaq al Badr had mentioned in his words. He said tawaghi, al tawaghi, the word tawaghi is plural to the word al taghut. Al taghut. Wattaghut is derived from Tughyan. This word Tughyan in Arabic, which means to transgress. To transgress. So, Attawaghit, the, they are the transgressors. That, that regarding which the servant transgresses beyond bound, beyond the bound of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from that which is worshipped. Followed or obeyed. And this, yani this tafsir came from the works of Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. In the book that's translated with the works of Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, he says, at tawaghit is a plural again of the word taghut. The author later in this section explains that the meaning of at taghut which is Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, the meaning of at taghut is every kind of rule that, uh, other than the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whether it is yani Whether it be tribal laws Or laws of the disbelievers Or secular laws or, or, uh, Of France and England Or tribal customs yani Any of these laws That are other than the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Are considered laws of a taghut And here the author says Whoever believes that, the, that a judgment other than the judgment of, of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more superior than the judgment of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like those who prefer the judgment of a tawaghit over his judgment, then that person is a disbeliever. That person has taken himself out of the fold of Islam. This is a nullifier from the ten nullifiers of Islam. That the person believes that guidance other than the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more complete than the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is disbelief in Allah. Disbelief in Allah. Why? He said this is because the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is revelation. The guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is revelation sent down from the heavens. Whereas the guidance of other than him is an affair which is originated within the earth. Man-made laws. See the difference? You cannot compare the difference. And the difference between them is great. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say, when he, was, when he used to deliver the khutbah on Friday, 
which we mostly hear now, most of the, the khatib on Friday, they introduce their khutbah with the, wor- the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, Amma ba'd, as for what follows, فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Verily, the most trusted speech or the most truthful, uh, truthful speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرُ الْهُدَى هُدَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ أو وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The best of guidance. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, his guidance is the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's ancient religions. He is not pleased with a religion for them besides the religion of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ Today, I have completed for you your religion. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي And I have completed my favor upon you. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا And I am pleased with Islam as a religion for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَ إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, And thus we have sent to you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an inspiration of our command. ما كنت نت... ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا. You knew not, يعني you did not know what, what is this book, meaning the Quran, nor what is faith, but we have made it a light where wherewith we guide whomsoever of our slaves we will. وإنك لا تهدي إلى صراط مستقيم. And verily you, O Muhammad, are indeed guiding mankind to a straight path. Sirat illahi alladhi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard, ala ila Allahi tasiru al-umur. The path of Allah, so this guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the path of Allah. He guides to the path of Allah, to whom belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in, is in the earth. Verily, all the matters in the end go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for decision. Meaning, this revelation, which he sent down upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, his guidance is the best of guidance, the most complete and holistic, and the strongest. He who believes the other than his guidance is more complete than his guidance, then he is a disbeliever in Allah who has excised, excited the, uh, ex- existed the religion. Similarly, he who believes that the judgment other than that of the Prophet wasallam, is more complete than the judgment of Muhammad wasallam, whereas his judgment is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani the person that believes that the judgment of other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is more superior than the judgment of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then that person has disbelieved. Again, why? Because the judgment of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَى nor does he speak of his own desires. It is only an inspiration that is inspired. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired everything to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this inspiration came from above the seven, yani from above seven heavens. This is why it is the most complete and it is the best of guidance and judgment. Therefore, he who believes that, the judge, that a judgment other than that of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is better than the judgment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he is a disbeliever in Allah. This is because he prefers the judgment of al-jahiliyyah, the judgment of ignorance, and has chosen over the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the judgment 
of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Therefore, this person is a disbeliever in Allah. Not only a disbeliever in the Messenger, but rather a disbeliever in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is a believer in what? The person that disbelieves in Muhammad and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a believer in what? In at Barakallah fi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Alam tara ila alladhina yaz'umuna annahum amanu bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablika yuriduna an yatahakamu ila al-taghuti wa qad umiru an yakfuru bih. Have you seen those hypocrites who claim that they believe in that which, which has been sent down to you, O Muhammad, and that which was sent down before you, and they wish to go for judgment in their disputes to the taghut, false judges, false deities, while they have been ordered to reject them. By shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, but shaitan, Satan, Wishes to lead them far astray. This is the works of shaitan. That he leads people astray. Taking them away from the judgment and the guidance of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is from going to for judgment to the taghut. Which is disbelief in Allah. This is because the person is not from the people of la ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or from the people of Tawheed, unless he disbelieves in a Taghut. Due to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he stated within the verse that follows Ayat al-Kursi. The verse that followed Ayat al-Kursi. And Ayat al-Kursi which yani, contains affirmation of Tawheed and a mention of its evidence, he followed this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala followed the verse after saying, وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لم في صامله. Allah سبحانه وتعالى He says there is no compulsion, يعني no force. There is no forcing anyone in the religion into Islam. Verily the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. Who can tell me what this most trust, trustworthy handhold is? La ilaha illallah. Barakallah fi. So whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in Allah, then that person has yani, grasped that trustworthy Handhold, which is La ilaha illallah. Therefore, disbelief in Taghut is a pillar of the pillars of steadfastness upon La ilaha illallah. So, he who does not disbelieve in a Taghut is not from the people of La ilaha illallah. And the one who prefers the judgment of other than the Prophet وسلم, over his judgment and believes. That the judgment other than his is better than his judgment, then he is the one who gives preference to the judgment of a taghut over the judgment of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then that person is a kafir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says about the disbelievers, about يعني when this verse was revealed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله والمسيح ابن مريم وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا إله واحدا لا إله إلا هو سبحانه عما يشركون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says they the Christians they took their monks they took their monks and rabbis as lords other than Allah. And they also took the Messiah, the son of Maryam, Al-Masih ibn Maryam, Jesus. And they were not ordered except to worship one deity. There is no one who deserves worship other than him. When this verse was revealed, one of the companions, he said to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa he said, we did not take them 
as يعني, as uh, things to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah He says, and they took their monks and rabbis as lords. This companion he said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, We did not take them as lords. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Afalam Yuharrimu al Halala Faharram tu wa ahallu al harama fa'ahlal tu. He said, Did they not make haram? Uh, uh, did, the, did they not make the halal haram and you made it haram? And did they not make al haram halal and you took it as halal? He said, Yes. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, That is taking them as lords. This is taking them as lords. We'll move on to the works of Shaykh Abdul Aziz al Rajihi, Hafidhahullah ta'ala, about the explanation of ruling. With rules other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says about the second part of the works of the Shaykh. He says, Likewise, when someone believes that there is judgment that is better than the judgment of the Prophet, we'll put these in, 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 uh, in points. We'll put them in points. I'll read the Shaykh's works and then I'll conclude it, inshallah, in points at the end. He says, Likewise, when someone believes, that there is a judgment that is better than the judgment of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Such as when one believes that ruling by man-made laws is better than ruling by the Sharia. Better than ruling by the divine legislation. This person is an apostate according to the unanimous agreement of the Muslim. Bil ijma'. That is number one. The same goes for... If one believes that ruling by man-made laws is similar to ruling by Sharia, as he also commits disbelief. So the first one says, it is better. The second one, he says that believing that the ruling by man-made laws is similar to the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this person also disbelieves. He says, similarly, if, a, if, if he believes that ruling by Sharia is better than ruling by man-made laws, however, it is permissible to rule by man-made laws, such as by him saying people have free choice. Yani it is not the same. Yeah? The judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better, but it is also permissible to rule by other than the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says people have their free choice in that matter. It is permissible for one to rule by man-made laws and permissible for him to rule by the Sharia. However, the Sharia is better than such person has committed disbelief also, according to the ijma, according to the consensus of the scholars. People do not have free choice in this matter, the Shaykh says. And this person has rejected something that is known from the religion by necessity. So based on this, if someone rules by man-made laws and believes that they are better than ruling by Sharia, then that person has disbelief. And if he rules by man-made laws and believes that they are equal to ruling by the Sharia, he has disbelief. And if he rules by man-made laws, but yet believes that ruling by Sharia is better than ruling by man-made laws, However, it is permissible to rule by man-made laws, he too has disbelief. So in all three cases, this person has committed major disbelief. And that person has taken himself out of the fold of Islam. He says, there is a fourth situation. Do we understand the first three? The first one says that ruling by other than Allah's laws is better than Allah's laws. The second, he says... That they are equal. They are equal. The third, he says that the, the, the uh, judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than man-made laws, but it is permissible to rule by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three of them have disbelieved major kufr taken out of the fold of Islam. The fourth one, there is a fourth situation, the Shaykh says, which is when one rules by man-made laws. Or by a man-made law in one issue or in one juridical affair 
But yet he believes that judging by the Sharia is, is obligatory. And that it is not permissible to judge by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws. Then that is not permissible to rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. And he believes that he is doing wrong at the same time. And that he deserves to be punished. However, his inner whims and desires and devil have overtaken him. So he rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. He rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed or an individual so that he can benefit. Yani this is going to a judge. Yani he rules a person in a court for his own whims and desires to benefit that person. Yani not judging by Allah's laws. Yani judging him in accordance to his own whims and desires to benefit him or to harm him then that person has disbelieved, but disbelieved, he has committed a major sin. A major sin. Minor kufr. Minor kufr. Minor disbelief. That person has committed minor disbelief. This is the one that differentiates, yani, that is different than the other first three. Inshallah, I haven't confused everyone. But it's very simple when we write this down. Very simple. This is the situation that differentiates Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and Ahlul Bid'ah, Al Khawarij. This situation is in dispute between the two, between Ahlul Sunnah and between Al Khawarij. They use the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَن لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Whoever rules by other than the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are the disbelievers. So the Khawarij, they use this verse from, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ma'idah and they implement it to the rulers, to the, to the Muslim rulers by making takfir upon them. This is why we need to understand the difference about what takes you out of the fold of Islam completely and what is a major sin in Islam. What is minor kufr? This is where Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah have disputed with Ahl al-Bid'ah. There's a story of Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentions that one time he went to Jum'ah prayer in one of the masajid in a sham, one of the masajid. And the khatib, he gave a very strong khutbah about this verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Whoever judges by other than the judge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or rules by other than the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are the disbelievers. He said the khatib gave a very powerful khutbah about this verse. And the khatib himself yani, had some uh, shortcomings in ways that were visible upon him. Anyway, after Shaykh al-Albani, he finished Yani, after the khatib finished the khutbah and they prayed and they finished, Shaykh al-Albani walked up to the khatib and he praised him for his energy. Praised him for his energy because he gave a very strong khutbah. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala. He praised him for his energy and he said to him, because the Shaykh, yani, he was given the khutbah in specific about the rulers. And he used this verse about the rulers. The Shaykh, he said to him, Barakallah feek, I see that you used this verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَن لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ He said to him, I do not see you ruling by the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, how? He says, first of all, you're clean shaven. Second of all, he's wearing يعني, tight pants, or pants that show his awrah, or that form his awrah. This is what we need to understand. That this verse was not revealed in regards of the rulers. To make kufr or to make takfir upon the rulers, the Muslim rulers. But rather this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed it to, to all the Muslims in general. That anyone rules by any, any rule of other than the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that verse applies to him. 
And in other verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ They are the transgressors. Or أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ They are the wrongdoers. So, in every situation, yani every situation is studied. We do not just make takfir out of whims and desires or upon, yani make takfir upon anyone that we see doing wrong. But rather, this goes back to knowledge and, and establishing the hujjah upon something like that. Shaykh uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that this verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealed even, even with the students yani, at, at school or at university. He said when the teacher is correcting their tests or correcting their exams, that if the teacher does not yani, uh, um, uh, correct them by the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani in fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by making every judge of every one of them equal, then that person, then this verse falls upon that teacher. And in anything, anything in this dunya, of any sin that you commit, this verse applies to anything. It's not in specific to the rules. This is what we need to understand. This is what our mashaykh have taught us. And this is what has been revealed. This is the truth. So in conclusion, in conclusion of this, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah are upon when yani, dividing these matters into these four categories that we mentioned. The first one, they believe that if they person yastahillu al-hukum bi ghayri ma anzal Allah wa yarahu halal. This is number one. If a person makes halal the judgment of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he sees it يعني, to be halal, yastahilhu first making it halal and he sees it and believes that it is halal, then that person is a kafir, major kufr, taken out of the fold of Islam. Number two, أَن لَا يَسْتَحِلَّ الْحُكْمِ بِغَيْرِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَيَرَاهُ أَحْسَنٍ وَيَرَاهُ أَحْسَنٍ also, Kufr Akbar. He does not make it halal, but he sees it to be better. He doesn't, say, he doesn't say that this ruling is halal, but he sees that man-made laws are better than the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that person has committed major Kufr out of the fold of Islam. Number three, أَنْ يَرَى هَذِهِ الْأَحْكَامِ مُسَاوِيَةِ لِحُكْمِ اللَّهِ That he sees man-made laws are equal to the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that person has committed major kufr out of the fold of Islam. Number four, man yahkum bighayri ma anzal Allah li shahwatin aw li dunya. Whoever rules by other than the, than the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala li shahwa, for a desire or for a matter of this dunya. And he follows his own whims and desires in a specific matter. Then, that person has committed minor kufr. Minor kufr. Kufr, duna kufr. And this explanation has been mentioned by one of the Sahaba. That, uh, uh, Ibn Jarir, Ruwi an Ibn Abbas. Ibn Jarir narrated yani, from Ibn Abbas that he said, it is not the kufr that you go to. That it is not the major kufr that you go to in explanation of this verse. But rather he said, it is kufr, duna kufr. It is disbelief, do not disbelief. Not the disbelief that takes you out of the fold of Islam, but rather it is minor disbelief. That person is in great danger and he has committed a great sin by ruling by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he is not to be taken out of the fold of Islam. And that person is to repent and yani, go back in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this great sin. أهل السنة والجماعة لا يكفرون الحكام إلا أن تقام عليهم الحجة أو لا يكفرون أي شخص إلا أن تقام عليه الحجة They do not make uh, disbelief upon a, uh, a judge or a, uh, a disbelief upon يعني they do not make disbelief upon a hakim, a ruler except that if the حجة has been established upon them so this is not something that we take lightly. Alhamdulillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us firm and show us the correct guidance.
This concludes the fourth nullifier of Islam. Have we got time to, fit, to, to go on? Half an hour. Half an hour left. The second one won't take much time, inshallah. If you want, we can leave it till next week with the sixth. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu.